I've been awaiting a device like this since I launched my channel back in January. And I know a lot of you have been too. A matter over thread presence sensor. It's one of a kind. And so because of that, I feel an immense responsibility to make sure I give you a real truthful look at this brand new device. And I never bought another presence sensor. This is my first one. So does it live up to my expectations? And were my expectations realistic? Today in our home, we are feeling the presence of the LeFair LWR01. I'm Patrick Hunt, and I want you to like smart home tech as much as I do. Real solutions with Matter, Apple Home, and a little creativity. Weekly, I'll show you how small upgrades can make a big difference. Welcome. I am not a presence sensor expert, full stop. Uh, but here's what I've learned in my experience with this presence sensor and some of the research that I've been doing. Presence sensors are different from motion sensors because they often use a different technology or a variation of the same technology sometimes. Uh, but they often have the same goal. Is somebody here? And then, is somebody still here? And presence sensors can answer both of those questions uh, more precisely and more often than motion sensors. Presence detection is great for telling your smart home if somebody is in a certain area, but being very still. So if they're sleeping, reading, or maybe relaxing in the bath, and then automating devices based on that presence or even absence. But let's put motion sensors and presence sensors on a spectrum. On one end, you have the PIR motion sensors that detect pretty big motion uh, using passive infrared. You can create automations based on detecting motion and then not detecting motion with a price tag of around $20, typically. And then at the other end of the spectrum, there's presence sensors. And if you're familiar with something like the Acara FP2, that's a very robust presence sensor. You can create zones. I believe it runs on the 60 gigahertz frequency. There's great precision where you can create very complex automations of people in one zone or another zone or both zones. But this sort of precision requires heavy power usage, so it has to be plugged in. And with a pretty big price tag of $85 when it's not on sale, and it requires a hub on top of that. So let's drop a device right in the middle of that spectrum in just about every way, which may be exactly what you're looking for. It's the LeFair LWR01, and that is a matter over thread presence sensor. It uses millimeter wave technology on the 24 gigahertz frequency. It can detect presence up to around 12 feet and then motion up to about 23 feet and it has a detection angle of about 120 degrees. There's a built-in ambient light sensor, which is pretty common on devices like this at this point, but it's also IPX3 splash resistant because of one of its best features, and that is that it can be wireless, powered by only two AA batteries. It does come with a USB-C power cable, so it can be wired, but to put presence sensors in the places that they can be most effective, like high on a wall or in a corner, it's great to have that battery power so you don't have dangling wires or a conduit running down the wall. So to me, that's one of its best selling points. I can't speak much to the battery life because I've only had it about a week. You'll add the sensor to the LeFair app after adding it to your platform of choice, which it's compatible with all of them through Matter, including Home Assistant. And in the LeFair app, you can adjust the detection range and the presence delay time. In terms of form factor, this can be mounted to your wall and adjusted to an angle using the adjustable base. And it's not an ugly, bulky sensor. I really wouldn't mind having this mounted to my wall or in the corner given its fairly low profile. And the pre-order price is $33, which I think is very fair. It goes up to $50 after the pre-order timeframe. So you could buy one and a half of these for the price of one Akara FP2 sensor without the hub. And with this, there is no hub because it's thread. Where do I think this will most realistically be used? laundry rooms, closets, and bathrooms. Places where people are getting ready and moving in and out of, and then leaving, forgetting to turn off the light. I put a motion sensor in our closet and had automation set up for detecting motion and then not detecting motion, and it would keep turning off on me when I was still in there. This solves that very problem. You cannot set up zones like the Akar FP2 in the LeFair app. So sitting in a chair reading, in bed sleeping, at the dresser getting ready, these cannot be three different scenes triggered by three different automations using this device alone. When first reading about the sensor, I was reminded of the third reality millimeter wave motion sensor, which uses the 5.8 gigahertz frequency and is also wireless. And I found myself wondering why that one was labeled a motion sensor and this one labeled a presence sensor, given that the technology seems so similar in the two sensors. And then I realized I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. So does it deliver? Let's go through the good, the bad, and the ugly. 
I set this up in our bathroom, which has a doorway that separates the shower and the toilet from the sink in the tub. Using the self-adaption feature, it gets an understanding of the room and tries to dial in the detection zones. This is a great feature because fine tuning something like this for the first time can be a little frustrating when you really don't know where your expectations of its performance should realistically be. How quickly will it respond? How precise are the distances in the app? So having that jumping off point is really awesome. After some fine tuning in the range detection, I did get it to successfully detect my presence uh, behind the wall separating the shower from the sensor. Of course, being able to mount this really high on a wall with no wire dangling down is such a huge benefit. Or in a closet where you may not have any outlets. So this is a brand new ability for a lot of people. And the price point is such that you could buy three or four of these without breaking the bank and adding real capabilities to your smart home. Now a little bit of the bad and the ugly, both of which are entirely on the app, which is to be expected with a brand new product like this. The range detection has a little real-time person icon that should be updating as I move in and out of ranges, which is such a helpful feature, but it was inconsistent. At one point, I wasn't even moving and the icon was moving between two ranges. And in a similar instance, I was trying to determine the range of which I wanted presence to start being detected, and I'm still not entirely sure which range that is without getting a tape measure out and seeing how far I actually came from the sensor. Sometimes that threshold was the second range, sometimes the third. I understand that some of this is likely due to interference. And a major point that I wanna raise here is that interference is not unique to this presence sensor. It's actually a pretty common pain point. But it's this reason that this was a pretty hard device to get an accurate read on. There were some days where it worked exactly as expected, and then other days where I was waving my hand around to get the lights to turn back on. And if you asked me for my absolute truthful expectations, I really wanted that experience where I would take a few steps forward and the lights would turn on. And then I would take a few steps back and the lights would turn off. But to dial in something even close to that experience meant I had to sacrifice integrity in other parts of the bathroom. So I guess the lights will have to wait about 20 seconds before they turn back off. And so the unfortunate ugly. I think that range detection was so tough because sometimes that little presence icon would get stuck in a zone constantly detecting presence even when I was long gone. And the only way to fix it was to just reset the device. And lastly, the real dagger. At some point during setup in the LeFaire app, our ring doorbell of all things started recording live views consistently in 12 minute increments all day long. Removing the sensor from the app, not Apple Home, did seem to stop that recording from happening. But considering I'm using a Raspberry Pi and HomeBridge to integrate my Ring into Apple Home, I think this combination of things may make me an outlier here, so I wouldn't worry too much about this issue. I had an automation planned for our bedroom using the ceiling fan, our thermostat, and the outdoor temperature, etc. But I spent so much time troubleshooting a lot of these issues in the app that I didn't get a chance to play with it and really see what it could do. If you find that you're having issues in the LaFaire app, I do think that you could remove the sensor from the LaFaire app and just use it in your platform like Apple Home. And if the room is relatively closed off, I think the sensor would work just fine without needing to dial in that detection range. But from speaking directly with the product engineers, I'm confident that a lot of these known issues are going to be resolved before the wide release of the sensor. Uh, they're working on making the app more intuitive and easier to configure. So will this sensor get a permanent spot in our smart home? If the ring issue gets resolved as soon as possible, then the answer is yes, but with a caveat. If I got my hands on this sensor at the pre-order price, then I would buy it and treat it like a powerful motion sensor. And I'd put it in a low stakes room like the laundry room or a closet until the app experience stabilizes. I would expect LaFaire to continue updating the app UX, fixing the bugs, and communicating with users as effectively as possible that these known issues are a thing of the past and we can start using this thing as intended. At the very least, you have a very reasonably priced millimeter wave motion sensor that will soon be a rock solid presence sensor. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next week.